Alright, hello guys, and I'm just doing a little follow-up to my last video, uh, which was on the graphics card, the early 3D Accelerator, the Rendition Verite uh, 3D Accelerator card. And uh, someone in my comments brought up a couple things about using newer drivers, because I was using the sort of diamond, the, the standard drivers that came with the, the card I was using, uh, which was the Stealth 2, I think like the S220. Um, it was the Diamond Multimedia version of the uh, rendition card. And um, I, he, he brought up some good points about the drivers and things like that. And I was thinking about it, I was like, well, I, yeah, I, I did want to do this little follow up thing. So, um, and it's going to be about drivers and updates uh, on the card itself. Um, but before we get into that, I want to stress this is a kind of a quick follow-up to that main video on that card. So if you're watching this video, I strongly suggest you watch the main video, which is like 45 minutes or so, uh, about the Rendition Verite card. And I will put a card up. It should be popping up in the corner right now, and I'll put a link in the description. And um, you know that link at the end uh, of the video but again I strongly suggest you watch that video before you watch this one because this is just kind of a quick update um, although we will be going over some things like updating the BIOS briefly um, which you know if you know about this card and you just maybe are clueless about the BIOS update and want to check that out real quick go ahead and watch but suggest you watch that first video first so anyways uh, on my original video, why I didn't do what I'm doing now in that video, why I'm doing a follow-up. Um, well, first of all, I, as I've said it many times before in other videos, and I said it in that video, I wanted to get like a vanilla 1997 experience for this card. Now, I would imagine most people that bought this card from the store uh, just used the drivers that came in the box. You know, they pulled out the CD, them, I'm guessing it was probably on, I don't think it was on a floppy disk at this point, probably the CD, and they installed, they put in the card, and they installed the, the base drivers from Diamond, and they just merrily went on with their life. Um, it, even if you had the internet then, I don't think a lot of people went on the internet searching for like updated reference drivers and things like that. And I don't think, well at least in 1997, I don't even think the bio, I don't know when they put out the BIOS update, but I, I just wanted to go with the vanilla experience. So that's why I didn't cover this subject in that video. And the second thing, which is pretty relevant too, is the length of that video. It was like 45 minutes long. Now, I personally don't have a problem watching long videos. I, I kind of like hour long when I sit down and there's a YouTube creator I really like and I watch an hour plus video. But I know a lot of people don't have that kind of attention span. Um, so when I start doing a video, when I get to a video that's like 45 minutes plus, I start getting very kind of leery and I, I don't want to continue. I don't want to make my videos too, too long. Um, although if you guys like long, long videos as opposed to short ones, let me know in the comments because um, I am curious about your opinion on longer videos. But I kind of get kind of like leery when it gets to 45 minutes and I kind of want to wrap things up. So that was another reason I didn't sort of add this uh, point on at that point. But um, I, I did want to do this follow up. Um, so what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to do the latest reference drivers I could find for the card, and I am going to do the BIOS update with the latest BIOS I could find for this card, which should update it to the uh, V2200, which should increase our uh, speed. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do some benchmarks again, and we're going to see if we get any different results and what kind of performance increase uh, we get and how it goes with compatibility. So that's what this video is, and we're going to start with that right now. So keep in mind for all these BIOS updates and the reference drivers, you can go to the Vogan's uh, drivers uh, page. Uh, you can just go into Google's and put in Vogan's drivers and you'll find it. And you can search on the side for uh, under graphics cards and it's it's all listed there and you can download them there. So to do the BIOS update, of course, you'll have to have the Verite card installed. Um, you're going to have to format a floppy drive, uh, a bootable floppy drive, uh, which is like format forward slash s I believe like format a forward slash s you can look it up um, and then you just need to put these the files on the uh, floppy drive and set your PC to try to boot first from the floppy drive if it, if it isn't already restart the computer and it will do the process now I use the latest BIOS um, you can see it here on the file I got from Vogan's it has like three uh, different BIOS updates 
Uh, I believe the first one they have is what my card already had already. It was like 1.31, and I went for the latest one. I think it's 1.36, um, but it, it's initially just an EXE um, file, or just an EXE, and then you click on it and it will unpack a bunch of files. Uh, be sure you like unzip them or unpack them onto the floppy disk you'll be using. Uh, make sure that floppy disk is in there then, restart, and it will kind of, I guess, boot from that floppy and it will update the BIOS on your Verite card. Um, now at one point through this process, uh, your screen will go black. Uh, don't worry, don't freak out. It, it took a long time and for a minute I was almost tempted to restart the computer because I thought maybe something messed up, but it's just, uh, you know, it can't display an image when it's, it's changing the BIOS. So just wait it out and your monitor will eventually kick back in and it will come up and there will be a bunch of stuff and it will say, it should say process completed. Uh, at that point you can, uh, you know, un eject the disk and restart and then you should have your updated BIOS. Um, okay, so with after the updated BIOS, uh, I did want to go in and I used PowerStrip and I did check the uh, the performance configuration to make sure there was any difference. And uh, sure enough, there was definitely a difference. I it, think the um, it, it did match up to what the V2200 is supposed to be. So I think we went from uh, like. 40 megahertz for the core clock speed to 55, so it's like a 15 megahertz jump. I think the memory was like a 10 megahertz jump. I don't know if it stayed the same or it jumped 10 megahertz. I'm not sure. I don't remember what it was on the original. I guess I could go back and check, but yeah, it definitely changed. And you could see instead of it saying like the Stealth S like 220 Turbo, it actually said uh, you know Rendition Verite V2200. Uh, so that's good. So our BIOS update did work. So uh, next I want to move to updating the drivers, which is a pretty easy uh, process. So the drivers I used were the latest ones. They're version 3, the beta 5, build 5176 from uh, 1999. These are the, the latest, the last uh, drivers I could find, reference drivers. Uh, and if you go into display properties, it looks a little bit different now. It does have that diamond multimedia stuff. Um, but you know you have your a colors tab and then a verite one or verite one with the, you know your info of the card and you can set refresh rate and move the screen adjust the screen and uh, nice things like that. All right, so let's run some benchmarks and test for compatibility. So first I ran Keen 4 just to see if it changed anything since this game sometimes has scrolling issues and uh, like originally there was no problems whatsoever. It scrolled just fine. Uh, I had no issues with this game, so it didn't affect. Uh, the compatibility at least with Keen 4 at all. I, this is just, a, like I said, this game uh, is known to have like scrolling issues with some uh, video cards, so I always like to check it, but no, it, it ran fine, didn't break anything there. I, I didn't really expect it to though. As for the DOS uh, benchmarks, uh, they all came up exactly the same. I, you know, I would be showing you a little uh, bar chart right now, but uh, everything uh, under DOS in the software mode benchmarks came up exactly the same, uh, even Quake. So the little bump in speed um, with the monster didn't really affect uh, these DOS benchmarks. So taking a look at VQuake, which is the uh, version of the original Quake that kind of takes specific advantage of the rendition verite card, we did see slight speed increases. Uh, so at the low 320 by 200 resolution, uh, we saw a couple FPS uh, point increases, uh, so we cracked the 40 FPS. And then uh, with the higher resolution of 640 by 480, we also saw a slight increase uh, with a couple of uh, FPSs. Moving on to the Windows benchmarks, uh, Final Reality actually now did fully uh, detect the card. Um, no problem running Final Reality. It ran the entire uh, benchmark, and it looked it looked pretty decent. I mean, it didn't. I've seen much better uh, of performance, but it, it surprised me how well it did with the uh, Final Reality uh, benchmark. So. Uh, everything looked, you know, pretty okay. Uh, even the end, I'm not sure what you call that end scene, that Blade Runner-esque where the ship's going through the, the mists and everything. It looked, it looked alright. Um, again, not the smoothest, 
uh, but it did work this time and it, before it didn't even detect the card so uh, either the newer drivers or the BIOS update uh, fixed this issue I am going to heavily suspect it was just the newest drivers that uh, allowed this benchmark to detect and run the card without issue and then we have 3D Mark uh, 99 which performed better or worse depending on how you look at it um, so in the first test uh, with the futuristic flying cars, it was getting one FPS, but this time it picked up maybe one or two. Um, and it looks like the sky texture uh, looked different, looked a little bit better, like that improved as well. So I, I guess you could call that one running a little bit better, a uh, little bit better textures, I guess, and like one or two higher FPS, not great. Unfortunately, now, uh, whereas before 3D Mark 99 Max would finish, uh, the whole benchmark, um, now it would crash, and it would crash at the same point, starting the same test at every time. So, uh, unfortunately, either the drivers or the BIOS update did break uh, full compatibility with uh, this uh, benchmark program. And then, uh, finally, I wanted to try Tomb Raider, or V Tomb Raider, or whatever you would call the Verite version of Tomb Raider, again, to see if maybe the BIOS update or the drivers fix that little glitch with the purple or magenta uh, lines when you play this version of Tomb Raider. And unfortunately, they are still there. So it looks like uh, Tomb Raider, if you want to play the Verite version, this is definitely a game where you need the original uh, rendition Verite card. Um, play it and again I, I even tried that patcher program again to like patch uh, supposedly it patches the exe files to make them more compatible with the later verite cards but it just didn't work for me with tomb raider even with the updated bios uh, and drivers all right so that's about all for our second kind of quick look at the rendition verite card with the uh, latest bios update and drivers and I, I guess you could say mixed result. I, I think we saw more improvement than not. Um, really, the only thing that was a problem was the 3D Mark 99 Max would crash. It's just a synthetic benchmark. It's no big deal. Uh, again, I only sampled a very small number of games, so I don't know, you know, how this affects things overall. But I'm guessing uh, knowledge probably does more good than bad. Um, with any of the games it didn't seem to mess anything up and we just got better FPS so yeah if you do get I, I think a good strategy if you want one of these cards is to get the diamond monster one version because uh, it's just much more available and it seems to be much cheaper than the other ones I don't think AGP or PCI really will make that much of a difference I don't have an AGP version to test I don't think it's a huge difference I think most of these cards came in PCI and all of the monster versions were PCI so my suggestion if you want this card get the monster version PCI and then do the uh, BIOS update and play around with drivers uh, I don't know maybe the latest ones aren't the best fit for you but uh, they seem to work just fine for me and yeah and then you have yourself a uh, V uh, 2200 uh, Verite card and it, it it for an early accelerator 1997 accelerator it seems it's like a it's a decent card um, there's not a whole ton of games that support it uh, the proprietary API but it for an earlier uh, 3d accelerator card I've seen much worse and it, it seems to work fairly well and vquake looks kind of cool so uh, check it out and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video